warning! You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. This is Dr. Todd Lee and soon to be Dr. Madison. That's DJ Madison. This is Jamie. And we are here in her new studio. What about the, the Black Bull studio? <laughs> <laughs> uh, DJ was informing me that she lives in the swingers community. Yes, so that, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yes. The, the, when when Garrett and I first used to live stream, we would, we would get on like this, and people would always ask us about our bull, assuming as a couple live streaming together that we were part of the swinging community, because we're not, we misunderstood. So we went into great detail about our bull and how he would always try and run away. <laughs> it was problematic. <laughs> Disobedient bull. I'm going to let you take some questions, because they, especially people that tune in a lot, they always hear me answer the same ones over and over and over again, and I always like to get a little bit of different perspective. Um, here we go. I'm gonna cup this. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Your mic. Get ready for a ride. BPC 157. What is it used for, and how is it injected? Okay, that's a good question. So it's really originally developed for ulcers. So a lot of the paperwork or studies are about taking it orally because it's supposed to help with ulcers. But what our community uses it for is tendon ruptures. And so they think because it says you can take it orally, they think if you take it orally, it's going to work on the tendon ruptures, which it might to some limited degree, but um, it's not going to work as well as just injecting it as close to the tendinous rupture as possible. So the way it really works is it increases the amount of um, vascularity to that area. It's, um, I forgot what the stands for, but it basically causes vascularization so more vessels to grow in that target area so tendons and ligaments have very very little vascularity or vet vessels blood vessels in them so they get very little blood supply so if you're on healing drugs like gh or anivar it doesn't get the blood the protein for instance doesn't get that blood to the tissue to allow it to repair or grow so by using bpc it allows tendons and ligaments to heal faster. But it doesn't mean you wouldn't heal muscle tears. I mean, you would feel, heal muscle tears faster also. So when you use it in conjunction with TB500, which decreases inflammation, then you're gonna get even more out of it. And then the GH, IGF-1, Anivar will help you. And you don't have to use Anivar specifically, but Anivar was the only one that was FDA approved for post-surgical wound healing and repair. They pulled the FDA approval from Anivar recently. So technically now, the government being as smart as it is is now driving people that were normally law-abiding citizens to the black market in order to appease some idiot lobbyists, I guess. So now BPC is illegal, TB500 is illegal, growth hormone is illegal, and Anivar is illegal. Everything that would allow you to heal faster so that you can't get better. So you need them. And I think BPC is drastically underused in terms of gastrointestinal health. I've used it in clients that have had GI distress and ulcers, and you're not supposed to use it in your horses. But I'm just saying, it is, I, I don't think people use it enough in that, that just, capacity. It's always used, um, used just, for injuries. Just in black wolves, not in horses. Um, oh, this is probably a one word answer. I, I get asked a lot about peptides. Mm -hmm. um, Will you see a significant difference if you're using CJC-1295 and Ipamorelin while working out pretty hard? Yes. I mean, that, that's such a confusing... Working... Okay, I'm, 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 this is the TikTok crowd. I'm sorry, TikTok crowd. I'm not familiar with you. All right, so working out pretty hard, you're pretty hard, may not be hard enough. If you say pretty hard, I'm going to say no. Right. You're pretty hard, may not be hard enough. So well, I like to use adult talk, like reps and reserve. So you should be between zero and five reps and reserve. That's good enough. Anything with more than six reps and reserve is not good enough. So it depends on, is it a hyper aggressive nails pretty hard? Or is it a 
housewives pretty hard because these have been just scientifically... Let me tell you about some housewife hard. No. <laughs> <laughs> scientifically proven that women don't push their sex to failure as frequently as men do. That someone needed a study to prove this. But, you know, it's like I said... It's it like, makes it less sexist if you have a study. <laughs> yeah, if you have a study that says, well, according to this study, the grass was cut because we measured the grass and it's shorter than it was yesterday. I was like, so the fact that I looked out my window and watched some dude cutting the grass, that wasn't evidence enough? Well, if that's anecdotal evidence. That doesn't really count for anything. <laughs> Cialis is a pump. How long before I hit the gym? I think you should use Viagra instead. Cialis usually causes lower back pain and sinus congestion. Do you use Viagra? Yeah. I get the sinus issues from Cialis. Mm -hmm. I've got some with me. When we go to the gym tomorrow, you can take Viagra to see if it works. I have not used Viagra before. It's awesome. It's way better because it's a muscle pump rather than a lower back and a sinus pump. I'll take Viagra and I'll report back. All right, TRT has increased my blood pressure. More high normal now than previously. Been on TRT for four months now. I mean, all right, I'm going to give you a, a little anatomy lesson here. Ready, kids? So let's say you're going to measure someone's arm. Stick your arm out. Don't call me out like that. Don't do that. Okay, well, <laughs> stick your leg out. All right. Here. Right. Was that her? No. All right. So I can almost encircle her whole arm with my hand. And this is where her brachial artery is. So I can compress that brachial artery. In theory, if I squeeze hard enough, she'd lose feeling to her fingers. I'm externally applying pressure to your arm to compress that artery. Now, you squeeze my arm. I don't think I can reach. Here, here we are. So would it take the same amount of force to compress that brachial artery as my brachial artery? No. So the thing that doctors don't realize is that people who have arm muscles, it, it now renders the upper arm cuff completely useless. Now let's look at my wrist. I can put right here, just push on this artery, and I can feel my pulse. I don't have to dig all the way up in here inside, in between the bicep and the tricep. I can feel my pulse with my thumb. I have to push a lot harder than feeling my pulse right here. So therefore, the correct place on one of us to measure our upper arm, to measure our blood pressure is the wrist. They didn't measure it. Therefore, that's an invalid test. If your arms are bigger than 12 inches around, then it should be around your wrist, not your upper arm. The average adult man has a 12 inch arm. Is TRT worth it? For, that's, what are these questions? It's like, with, so typically, I'm gonna say is... yes. If, if your testosterone is below the amount that you need to get a heart on, then yes, you should take something and get a heart Consider on. it like a rapid fire. But it's so vague. Yeah, I got it. You got you to give vague answers. It's even more vague than do you like pizza. That's kind of the fun, though, is you can interpret the the questions how you wish. So you just give them an answer that isn't even going to give Most them Most of the want. time, yes. So, and then do they even pay attention long enough to hear the answer? Or? It's TikTok, so I don't think anybody watches anything for more than 45 seconds. Although I have some really awesome uh, people in my community and clients that are on here, but for the most part... Like, when I go through live streams, I go, ooh, and I watch it for five <coughs> seconds, and I go to the next one, and I go, ooh, and how, I go to the next one. How many people are watching right now? Right now, we're at 76. So we lost a lot of people. But it fluctuates, so. Mm -hmm. And if you, if, like, it's very interesting. This is a very, very different uh, demographic, so. So, everyone asked if the mics are working. So, we're, we're making this a dual purpose thing. I have it live streaming off my phone, just like my regular phone, which is why the logo is flipped. But we're also recording on Riverside so we can post this because this is the first time we have met in person. Yes, it's true. We're looking at each other. It's very odd. She's a human. Yeah. Not a fairy. I thought you were like uh, like a fairy, like some type of ethereal being that existed just in, on the inner space. What's it called? The internet? The interweb? The interweb. The interweb. I just read this book. And it's basically had these light demons trapped in fiber optic cables. And so they basically were the AIs in this science fiction thing. So people were basically letting demons control everything, thinking that they were artificial intelligence software, but really they were angels that had went to hell. And they got out as light demons, because they're called Luciferians. And they got trapped in the fiber optic cables. A ghost in the shell.
catch stuff. I know that's a different movie. Please don't tell me that you're still... The, I'm, okay, so some, I'm just going to read you some, some of the comments. Because remember, Todd is new to TikTok. And I did put his, um, oh no, what is it called? Username? I have a username? Yeah. Okay. Is it Todd Lee and B? We're going to get, it yeah, Todd it's Todd Lee and B. <laughs> We're trying to get him on TikTok. I um, made it a while ago, and then I get told that it's used to... It's crazy how that dude heavy breathing while talking. Oh, it's because... Because I, okay, I, I beat him up earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know why I breathe so heavy with the mic all the time. What? Maybe I should be back here. <laughs> is that better? Or can you not Are you a mouth breather? breather? I don't know. Do I, is my face deformed? No. I, my mouth breather is supposed to have deformed looking faces. Do they? Yeah. Maybe it just means you breathe through your mouth. I know, but breathing through the mouth deforms Is she the face. safe if he is on DECA? Am I safe? If, oh, Are you on DECA? Am I safe? I don't know if she means you. <laughs> or I think he, I think what you're asking is if a dude busts a nut inside of a girl and he's on DECA. I think they need an eye physically safe with you on DECA. Why would DECA make me dangerous? <laughs> and why why that, does DECA make you dangerous? Please tell yeah, us. <laughs> more like DECA would be neutering you, ne- neutering Mandrelone, as opposed to dangerous DECA. But to answer your question, if you had busted a nut in a girl with Trent, she might get pimples. <laughs> I've managed to do that. Quite a few times. She might get pimples. Yeah, I gave, I gave a lot of girls pimples over the years. Todd's spreading the gift of acne, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> it's like, well, you don't want anyone else to like her. Once she's yours, you want to break her so that one else can use her. So, <laughs> so this is this is the question I get probably on, on every live stream I do, every video, every, this more than anything. And I always give the same answer. I know you typically give the same answer as well. What can I take on top of my TRT. And I want to state, without a doubt, this stems from TRT clinics just offering added compounds to anyone. And so they think that if they are hypogonadal and they need TRT, there's always, they need something on top of it. I don't think they are correlating the difference. I I don't think performance enhancement and actual TRT, like it's a blurred line. There's no blurred line. It is very cut and dry. TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. Oh, tell it's, me, man, tell me, I'm on 300 mags a week. It's TRT, but it's prescribed because I needed it with my test levels of 500 nanograms per deciliter. I needed it. Uh, <laughs> you're dealing with a totally different psychology level than I am. I, I get different people than you. No, it's okay. So Kurt can die on here too. Yeah, I mean, Kurt could not handle this. He would drive him fucking nuts. He'd be like, he'd start turning red and exploding. I could see the veins pop yeah, out of his no. forehead. He gets so frustrated. No, TRT means testosterone replacement therapy. If you're using more than 20 milligrams a day, it's not really TRT anymore. Now it's just a baby cycle. Is it Todd went off? When did I go off? I don't know. This isn't me angry, I promise you. You won't like me when I'm angry. He's so calm right now. Yeah, I am calm. It's because I've got this jazz microphone in front of me. It's because <laughs> Someone said, hey, for the record, not safe. My son is the result after his father ran a cycle of deck and TRT. <laughs> well, and TRT, that's the thing. It's the, test, it's the testosterone that does the trick. <sighs> Can you go over DNP? Sure. So dinitrophenol is basically a textile dye that's used to make things such as towels and blankets yellow. Also, girls in the 1920s were taking it because they wanted to be thin without having to dye it. And it would cause them to go blind. And some of them would cook their organs from the inside. So it got banned back then, about 100 years ago. Got popular again, and then it went out of phase, and then Tony Hughes brought it back. In all his infinite wisdom. And now, so the thing is, is DNP builds up really slow and lasting your system a really long time. So people will already be up to 600 milligrams when the first 100 kick in. Then they cook their organs. So kind of like ecstasy, you got to stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. Because what it does is it punches hole in the mitochondria. I don't remember if it's the internal layer or the external layer of the mitochondria. But the point is, it basically causes you to leak electrons, I believe, so you don't generate as much ATP from fat. So the Krebs cycle is less efficient, so you have to burn more fat to get the same on ATP. So it speeds up metabolism, but it's a sink for heat, basically. If you ever put your hand on an engine, on a car, it's warm. It also makes sound. So that's an inefficient system. 
In theory, all of the gasoline should be converted into the spinning of the axles. And I know a lot of people are like, it's called the crankshaft. And I'm trying to simplify this shit, guys. So the point is, is that if some of that energy is lost, it's heat and sound, it's an inefficient system. So what you're doing is you're creating mitochondrial inefficiency by poking holes in it. So you lose a lot of the energy as heat and not chemical energy, which is ATP. So you're thinking, oh, this is so great because I'm losing fat faster. And unless you live in a cold area where you can just run around with your coat off, it's not a good thing. People in Florida will all be on it and die from heat exhaust, from death from the heat because it's so humid, they're sweating so much, they can't stay hydrated. So it's like a weapon of last resort and you would have to use very little of it. And I don't think it'd be appropriate for this community based on the other questions. I know you're all individuals, but if people are asking me like, what do I add to my T TRT? You know, is TRT worth it? DMP is not the same conversation at all. It's like, there's test, then there's GH, then there's a DHT, then there's a mandrolone, then there's insulin. By this point, you're already like, Super Saiyan 5, DMP is like Super Saiyan 9. Like, you shouldn't be touching DMP unless you're an IFBB pro who's competing in the long ago. And we are aware, the audio is coming through my phone, we are not the most tech savvy no. individuals. So we have multiple streams in the least professional manner possible with a slew of cords everywhere. Yeah, what you see in this framing, looks decent. But it's really it's, it's bad not. everywhere else. It's not, no. I don't know what we're supposed <coughs> to answer, because this is a statement, but I went from RAD 140 to TRT because it shut down my testosterone. Can you please answer? Oh yeah, of course, that's easy. So the RAD 140 and all the SARMs are garbage. They're basically just poor man's anabolic steroids. I don't answer, like, that is the one thing. I try and to answer almost all questions, but, and, and honestly, it would be, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to even try and answer questions about SARMs because I don't like them, I don't use them, so I don't know anything about them. I couldn't even provide adequate information even from trying to, like, speak on them objectively because I know nothing about them. Well, I don't know any Nazis, but I know I don't like them. So the point is, is RAD 140 will still cause shutdown because any anabolic steroids are replacement. It's a form of testosterone replacement, but you're replacing testosterone with something that isn't testosterone, and it doesn't convert into the metabolites DHT or A2, and you need all three hormones to be balanced. Even a woman technically needs all three hormones to be balanced. That's why people use a test base so that it converts into the DHT and the estrogen. You know, I like to keep the estrogen and the DHT balanced because if the DHT gets too high, you'll lose your hair. And if the estrogen gets too high, you'll get gyno. And that's a relative thing. So, for instance, I lost hair using hair-safe compounds by wiping out my estrogen. And I was like, how the fuck did this happen? And then years later, when I got gyno, not from raising my estrogen too, I've been wiping out my DHT. I was like, how the fuck did this happen? I realized it's just the ratio. So my, my, my hair and my chest is stable if I'm at 100-100. Or if I was using a TRT dose, being at like a 40 and a 40 of DHT and estradiol. And you've got everything down to, I mean, it's precision now. I, I try to be, try to be pretty precise. Okay. Having high blood pressure my whole life and taking PEDs, no PCT at a young age, is it possible to get back on TRT when blood pressure, I'm assuming when blood pressure is regulated? That kind of, I think you answered your own question. I mean, I don't think you need to go off of TRT just because your blood pressure is bad. I think you just need to fix your blood pressure. You should be running Talmasartan, should be having about two gallons of water a day, should be having 10 grams of salt a day, or maybe 25 grams of salt a day. That's where the doctors fuck everything up, because they don't know what they're doing. So they're not fixing the problem, they're just taking away the medication, because they saw it on TV that testosterone causes blood pressure issues. And it's not that it doesn't, cause a tiny increase, but there's never a reason to stop TRT just because your health markers are off. You just fix your health markers. You shouldn't be eating processed food. That's you shouldn't what be we drinking filmed alcohol. on earlier, and that's 
particularly, like I said, every every platform will have a different demographic. That's what we filmed on earlier. It's like so many people are asking what com they're asking the wrong mm -hmm. question. It's what compound can I add to achieve X, Y, and Z? When it's well, you don't have any of the foundation there. Like you wanna you want more muscle, but like you you don't have anything to begin with and you're not eating a high protein diet. Like all the all the basics are lagging. And even with blood pressure management, blood viscosity, any of those issues that we frequently see it's always diet. Most of it can be managed. Yeah, it's always diet. what you eat. The, what I'm hearing is none of the population that we're dealing with right now are appropriate for this drug because they're on TRT, but the reason why they have low tier testosterone might just simply be because they're overweight, under exercising, and dieting poorly. If you just give someone a healthy lifestyle, their testosterone would come up to normal levels anyway. And sleep. So many people just don't sleep and they think testosterone is going to fix being tired. I'm like, man, you sleep four hours a night. Like, why are you speaking out of? Um, what do you mean you're tired? People don't sleep. Right. And we obviously need eight hours of sleep. You obviously need to be isocaloric or calorie surplus. Obviously, everything should be clean. Obviously, you should have a low fat diet. Obviously, you should have as much water and fat, salt as you can handle, so you've got as full of muscles as you can have. Unless you have kidney disease, the salt's not a problem. Are you less likely to experience libido issues on a straight test cycle than with 19 nors added? I've been on both. I ran 1400 Nandrolone. I ran f a no test. I ran 1400 trend and nose test. I've ran 1500 tr test and no trend or DECA. Nothing stops. You know, it doesn't matter. So I think it just, I think it's most of a personality thing. And that people assume their low sex drive is hormonal when they're just getting older and they got bored of it. It's like you're not 18, it's not new. It's like when you're 13, bit boobies are a big deal. By the time you're 30, boobies don't really matter anymore. So it's just kind of like you're growing out of it. I just love that you're saying boobies. It's just like, well, I'm choosing a 13-year-old's word for it. You know, yeah, it's like... I don't say that at all. You know, I say breasts. Definitely not. You're the most mature person. <laughs> <laughs> you're the most mature person. I know. But seriously, it's like, as you get older, you know, sex becomes less and less important. All right, DECA only. You for DECA only, right? Yeah, I do what was your experience like? only for like three years. It's like I thought it was great. I had no DHT, and no estradiol, so I had no side effects at all. Now, I didn't realize this at the time, but you need the estradiol to convert the GH into IGF-1, so I was wasting money on GH. But I wasn't running that much GH anyway. The most I was running was eight units. And how do you regulate DHT? Just with using less testosterone and making sure your estrogen is balanced with it. I have a super complex formula to use it, using deuteresteride, minoxidil, scalp irrigation. We've got a very complex video about it. But based on the sophistication of the video. <laughs> oh yeah, it's on it's uh how to regrow your hair or DHT management. It's been released twice actually. I send videos. that video okay. to people because I can cover the basics and that's that's it. And I send that video out to people. Yeah. If you want to learn, here you go. That's an aneurysm in a bottle, that, that video. But bottom line is based on the, the sophistication questions that we're getting, rather than trying to manage DHT with more drugs, just take less test and fix your diet, fix your training, fix your sleep. And this goes, okay, here's the unpopular thing. I know a lot of your audience are women. But if you're having erection problems, but you don't have an erection problem for porn, the problem isn't your dick, it's the girl you're sleeping with. I have, so this is a huge conversation is, is libido. I, and it's, it's, it's a touchy, <laughs> it's a touchy subject because, um, I think a lot of people are hopeful that it's going to be a hormonal issue and that it can be corrected. But even, even with women and how many men approach me and are speaking on behalf of their significant others saying, like, well, what can I give my wife? And I'm like, well, maybe don't suck as much or suck more. I don't know. But it, the point is, it's like, it's not always going to be fixed just by adjusting your hormones. There's so many other factors. Every time I've had this conversation, I always ask a dude, it's like, does your girlfriend wear high heels? The answer is no. Does she wear a dress? The answer is no. Does she do her makeup? The answer is no. Or calling me out. Does she do her nails? <laughs> the answer is no. Does she do her hair? The answer is no. Have her fix that shit 
before you start fucking with your cycle. Because I guarantee you, if she walks in the bedroom or through the living room and she's got on heels and lingerie and has her hair done and her makeup done and starts clawing all over you with her long painted fingernails and starts licking you and stuff and talking dirty to you, your dick will get hard. She just ain't, isn't trying. She just like flops down in her sweatpants and says, come do me. We got 15 minutes before the kids wake up. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> Like, I'm horny, get me off, and then kicks you off and gets up and goes and texts her friends. Then it's not like a fun night for you. So you eventually, after years of that, you just stop being sexually attracted to her. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the director of human performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. I uh, will be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. Uh, thoughts on inflamathine with TRT for atrophy? I don't know. It's like, I don't know, did a girl complain about your balls being there or you just think she cares? I will say 100% of the time I, it's, always it's always the male that worries about girls not liking your perception balls. right the, the the door knocker effect in doggy style and i've had many girls tell me the door knocker effect is overrated it's just something girls say in porn i have never heard of the door knocker effect so that is a new term for me well just use your imagination <laughs> oh i get it okay. it's just a new new, new so, term so in other words you haven't noticed one way or the other and if i had to tell you about it right now then you have it. I, I see I see the most concern, especially if someone is freshly out of a relationship. Oh, then they think you got dumped because your balls were small. And then they're like, oh no, new women, they are going to be vetting me based on my testicle size. No. It's the first thing they're going to look at. No, Forget anything else. The first thing they look at is the dick pic they ask for. <laughs> and because you have small balls, your dick's going to look big. Just make sure you shave them. That's why I said number one, shave your shoes. Shave your shoes. I don't have insurance, and it was impossible to get testosterone from providers locally. That's because they suck balls. Go, don't use insurance and just get normal testosterone. If you go through your testosterone, for, for anyone out there that does have the ability to get TRT, if you actually need it, male or female, and you get it through your provider, chances are you're not going to be getting to levels. That's good, but getting to levels where, where you really want to be, first of all. And sometimes the injection schedule, especially when you go locally, they aren't necessarily going to send you home with your script. You have to go into your physician's office. And unfortunately, sometimes it's once every two weeks, which is well, horrible. I mean, if, if you go to me, I'll do it right. You'll get daily injections. Not from me. You can touch your own butt. I don't touch your butt. But Oh, yes. If you want to touch your own butt. Yeah, if you touch your own butt, I will prescribe you testosterone. I'll order blood work, make sure that you're a candidate, make sure that you're healthy enough for it, which you probably are. If you're not healthy, I'll fix it. Not, and if you go on testosterone with me and, and the blood levels come up bad, I'm not going to pull it. I'm going to fix the problems. Yeah, that's, that's another thing. If you are looking for a, a prescription and you, you need HRT management, um, yeah, just gonna hold you can take take care of that, and he's yeah. definitely gonna use his TikTok so much. Well, like, fuck my TikTok. You can just <laughs> find me on Instagram or just email me. It's doctor spelled out toddly at gmail.com or use toddly on Instagram. I love that you have faith that you say doctor spelled out, and you think people will actually do that. D o c t o r <laughs> d o c t o r t o d d l e e double d double e double d double e m d. What is your opinion on physicians refusing to prescribe AIs when estrogen is out of yeah. AIs are stupid. You should use Primo. I failed. That's pretty much you the fail, you fail? All this. <laughs> what? Uh, we failed with the dog. <laughs> I'm trying to help you guys out, but I don't know what's going on with the mouse. Yeah, so here we go. Um, yeah, you don't need AIs. You just need less testosterone. Or you need Primo to mitigate it. I lost my stomach. Now I understand what you're talking about. What? Just one sentence answers. Yeah, it's it's, it's got it's got to be it's got to be rapid fire. I went to Mexico. Can you see her socks? Show show them I your socks. I hope there's your socks are awesome. Them. Well, not the bottom of the door. Well, the bottom's the same. No, but if you have a great sock, it's, it's the same print. It's worn down. Oh. Yeah. But, 
I don't wear shoes when I lift. I'm very annoying about that and disgusting. Well, it's not disgusting. It's a woman's foot. Men's feet are disgusting. Women's feet are. Women are angels, and every part of them is glorious. I couldn't even say it super straight face. Someone said something nice. I'm proud to know you and see how far you've come in social media because everybody knows I'm like socially inept in real life. You're not socially inept in real life. I spent the whole day sick to my stomach panic about meeting you. Really? Yep. All day. I had no idea. I had no idea. You were so calm. I was like, oh yeah, you're coming up. I'll see you in a few hours. No big deal. And I was like, I'm hot. Yeah, it's on TikTok. Are you going to hey. keep fucking with this? or What are you doing? I don't what know. happened to my mouse? Do you know where the chip is that goes with it? Because the chip is just gone. It's not plugged it. in anymore. I think that's very... I mean, I used that mouse. You guys watched me. It's how I got there. I know. Without it. I always use a mouse with a cord. Is there anything other than MK677 that will make me eat more throughout the day? Weed. THC is utilized by a lot of people. Some people report an increased appetite with just CBD. I have never experienced that. It's worked for my dogs. Do you have an aversion to MK677? No, I love MK677. I like G real GH more, but if someone wants appetite, then I obviously MK, for MK appetite. is for appetite. I should have used it this offseason. I don't know why I didn't think of it. Fuck, I'd be so much bigger now. I wouldn't have these tiny ass arms. The previous higher blood pressure question was on a female, and oh. my arms are not 12 inches. Should I be concerned? Thank you for clarifying that you were a female. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I still don't buy it when someone says they've got high blood pressure. Like, you should pet a dog, and then after petting a dog for 10 minutes, assuming it's not a high-stress dog, not like a dog in Xanax, but like a normal dog. No, no, I want to be a dog. <laughs> but like a normal, mildly inbred, not severely inbred dog. Pack that, and then you take your blood pressure again, and you'll be good. Do you know anything about assault PCT? What is what is that? It's probably a brand. I think anybody who calls their products assault, is stay the fuck away from it. You, the thing about like actual PCT <laughs> is, if you're if you're actually genuine, which we typically don't recommend coming on and off and on and off. Yeah. But if you are using a PCT, that's pharmaceutical. You don't buy that in a store. No, it's uh, it's, it's women's hormones or breast cancer meds. A PCT is not something you buy over the counter called PCT. That'd be the same thing as buying something called testosterone at GMC. It's not real testosterone. The the same places that are going to sell like the the SARMs like shredder packs, bulky packs and stuff. Like fucking like, man, this is so fucking funny. It's like Fisher Price steroids. Yes. And so and then these people are taking themselves seriously. So they they take they those. They think this things. is real. Oh god. And then they go to the same place and they're like, hey, I'm like I'm pretty fucked up now. Like, what do, what do I do? And then they sell them basically like it's usually maybe some like DHEA. Maybe like boron, ashwagandha, a bunch of bunch stuff, shit. and then it's, it's marketed as a PCT, even though what they were taking was like incredibly suppressive. They were taking SARMs, and then they get like this cute little vitamin pack that costs like hundred and fifty dollars, marketed as a PCT. God, if I had no soul, I'd be so rich. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. Um, a fool and their gold are easily parted. National stack is test 375, mass 300, trend 225, Winnie and Halo. What are you talking about? What is a national stack? I'm assuming that is a competitor headed to a national oh, show. So, okay, so tell me again what it is. Test at 375, mass 300, trend 225, Winnie and Halo. Sounds right, but you should be dosing daily. So when you talk to me in the future, guys, not that you're going to change your life just to accommodate my predilections, but speak in daily doses. Like you wouldn't say, I'm using 280 clon a week. You'd say, I'm using 40 clon a day. So why wouldn't you say, I'm using whatever the fuck that is, 35 or 34 tron a day? Or I'm using, what is that, um, 554 test a day. I always think it's odd when people already know their dosages before they've even begun a prep. Like I don't. Because like, they bought, they hired a coach who gives them what he's on. Yeah. Thirty-seven-year-old male went through stuff. Went on HRT a year ago. Now on TRT. Will this help reverse things? What the fuck? Wow. I have no idea what that means. 
I'm so sorry you went through stuff, but I don't know what Rip stuff. I don't know what what, what needs to be reversed. Yeah. Um, What's it? What? All right. What? What is the question again? I went through stuff, and I usually shut down when I hear that. Went on HRT yeah. a year ago. Now on TRT. Will this help reverse things? I don't know what that means. Me neither. We fixed the pause, though. By by the way. All right. Next person. Yeah. We'll we'll pay attention to the people who give us the best questions. Oh, I, I, I'm commenting myself. Oh, I press things. Just stop pressing shit too. I have a little fingers. I bet. Wouldn't I make it easier not to press the button? There's no way that you would be pressing the button. If I slap things. a tentacle down on it, then you think that. Oh, guy, no. It was it was in rep. Probably, so I'm assuming estrogenic no, effects. No, it won't really go better to normal. You gotta get that shit cut out. The the issue with the guy, no, is by by the time that people are really catching it, it's probably in a fibrous state. It, it, most of the time, by the time it, it's caught, it does need to be surgically removed. Yeah, six months is your window to get it fried. If you don't fry it within six months, you gotta cut it out. What do you? What do you? If you if you are if someone does catch it early, or maybe they they have it coming on to use for loxapine. I don't. I don't even need to. I just would call it slam the brakes on the tusk, jack the master on, and pretty well through the roof, and fry it that way. And then if I have to, I'd use relaxing. But I never have to. Unfortunately, it's almost I went once. It's noticeable. It's almost always going to be surgical intervention, which is really not the end of the world. It's just the, the price. I mean, how long were you down for? I wasn't. Well, they told me I had not lived for three weeks, but I was. She also said I was the, completely healed, like she'd never seen anyone in her life in five days. And she supposedly specialized in bodybuilders, which makes me wonder who was identifying as a bodybuilder and shouldn't. Because you're not a bodybuilder if you don't know about PPC, TB500, GH, and Anavar for post-surgical. Okay. Uh, when is blood pressure a concern that I should self-fix or just go to the doctor? I don't think a doctor is ever going to help you. I think I'm the only one who's going to be able to help you if you're... You are a doctor. Yeah, I know, but I don't, cool doctor. I don't consider someone going to the doctor is being a good solution, they're just going to get fucked up and the doctor's going to tell them to stop taking steroids. And he's not going to know what he's doing. So it's if your blood pressure is high from using anabolics, Tomasartan would be the proper treatment. And the blood pressure should be like 115 over 75. And there's, again, lifestyle factors. So many people, if you just improve little things... Right. I, I, I forgot we have to repeat ourselves every five yeah. minutes on this. It's because like, nobody, nobody, it's not interesting though, that's not fun. They do more drugs, so they can do more drugs. They don't want to make the actual changes, then you yeah. can get the results the from the The blood pressure is not from the drugs. Blood pressure is from your shitty lifestyle. Fix your lifestyle. Uh, can you explain the process about booking a call with you to talk about starting PEDs or coaching? I think our process is roughly the same. You go on our website, you purchase a call, and mm -hmm. we get you scheduled. That's it. I don't even schedule people. That's too much effort. <laughs> I just call them. I'm like, I'm like, what's up? And they're like, wait, is this Todd? And it's like, yeah, what you doing? And then they're like, I'm but with my kids. I was like, all right, well, call me back when you're done. And then they're like, are you serious? It's like, yeah, just use the phone. Don't text me. And then like, just call me. And yeah. then they call and like, what's up, man? And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, watch the anime. What are you doing? And then they're like, uh, it's so cool to meet you. And I was like, yeah, yeah, what can I do for it? And then we basically start talking. I just, just totally laid back. I sit at my computer and I have a little like naked dog in my lap. Yeah, I don't, I don't do anything cool like that. You just need a naked dog in your lap. No. Just go get going removed. Five K in Chicago looks perfect. Back in no, the gym and fuck a week. that. Fuck that. Aren't you in Chicago? No, no, I'm in Detroit. I'll do a twenty five hundred. Get at me. I've got a girl. You live in Detroit. Yeah. She lived in Chicago no. this whole time. No, Chicago's not dangerous enough. I live in the train. <laughs> Chicago's where pussies live. BP's 155 over 100, just on 350. Jesus yes. Christ, really? Whoa, go to the ER right now. He is doing daily cardio <laughs> and dieting. No, no, Todd, Todd is not located in Texas, but he is here visiting. Yeah, He's on a tour of Texas. I'm at, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was going on the barbecue eating. You know? Spree, and I was like, I'm gonna go hang out with DJ and eat her kids. He told my children that he was yeah. going to eat them, and they're like, all right. Yeah, cool. They're like, they're the willing sacrifices. <laughs> they were about it. Do you know anything about S4? No. Is that what the kids are doing? Yes. Is it a TikTok dance? <laughs> it's not a TikTok dance. Yeah. 
Yeah, we get um, is MK six seven seven good for beginners okay, as well? Okay, but seriously, dude, with the one fifty five blood pressure, please get a counterspell. Please let me help you. That's fucking horrible. It's like, was this the guy who was like, should I take care of it myself or maybe? Stay I think that? that was. The same oh my god, that's not acceptable. Like one twenty five. I mean, if you could take care of it yourself, it would already be taken care of. Yeah, either, like, so. Holy shit! I'm mean, gonna go this bad. Chelsea sets her two favorite people. I got him here in person, and the office is black now. Who's Chelsea? Ch- Chelsea is one of your female subscribers. Well, she subscribes my show. Yes. Why don't she? She watches comment? us all the time. Why I told her I was like, Chelsea, you need to comment. I don't know you exist unless you pick on me. Pick on him. Yeah, just... You know, but don't, don't, don't do it too much because you want to make sure you're still on there. Okay. Give me shit about how I breathe. I love that. Because <laughs> I choose to breathe like a fucking molester. No, just... Uh, breathe like a man. <laughs> is MK677 good for females as well? Yes. I use it. I would not be able to eat the food that I have to eat without it because I would eat like a I mean, bird. Let me rephrase it. If a woman wants to gain weight, yes. MK677 is for you. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. So that with with these products, you know, not just covering SARMs, but some of these secretagogues as well, when they are available at, like, your local health food store, please make sure you understand the effects of them because so many women want to cut fat, so they go to their local health shop, and then they take MK, and then they are ravenous because chicken and rice is never That's tasty, fucking so hysterical. All right, bottom line is, if you're watching TikTok to learn how to do... Do it yourself endocrinology. One, you need a psychiatry consult. And two, you need to get a hold of one of us so we can guide you because I'm not calling you dumb, but you are an innocent and you might be naive. And this is dangerous waters and you're swimming with sharks. This pharmaceutical company are full of evil people. The supplement industry is full of evil people. And they will fuck your ass up and I can fuck about you. And Christian, who who tunes into every single one of my live streams, wants everyone to know that he is so sick of seeing me spit off bullshit. Thank you, Christian. Wait, I'm confused. What's spitting off bullshit? I don't know. What I'm doing. What is... Why would he watch you if he doesn't like you? I don't know. I think but it drives the algorithm, so I'm not... I don't, I don't ever complain. So you have someone who's a rabid hater. And he says you're full of shit. The word hater makes me uncomfortable. Why? Because I feel like that's a term that people use that put themselves in a, a position of authority or, or power when they say they have haters. I like to just think that I'm not likable. <laughs> so. I'm not hateable. I'm just not likable. Hate's it's called what it is. I don't deserve the emotion of hate. I Tepid indignation is basically all I... Muster. Thank you, Gina. Gina's hyphen. She said, oh, he's, he's a doctor, book a consult. He can help you. He understands more about PEDs. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. Gina's awesome. Do I know Gina? You don't know Gina. Gina Gina's, Gina's one of my, my clients. Is it Gina or awesome. Gina? It's Gina. <laughs> it's Gina. <laughs> that was from Gina. 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 <laughs> Regina, that's Gina, what was up? <laughs> you remember that? Okay, cool. Um, let's see. I, le- I left off. Uh, I got I got distracted. Uh, a couple questions about Proviron. What can you tell us about Proviron? Your thoughts on Proviron use? So at low doses, you can use Proviron and mop up SHBG and free up free test. Once you're running 500, 600 total load, then proviron really isn't necessary. Plus, mass will do the same thing proviron will, but mass is anabolic, whereas proviron isn't. So if you're one of those people who's stuck working within the legal system and you're stuck playing with the less great drugs, then proviron is valid. But if you're someone who doesn't give a fuck about rules, then test, primo, mass, and GH, all you need. What is, does proviron help with prolactin? I don't know. I've never heard of that. Doesn't mean it doesn't. Just, I don't know about it. Uh, What is optimal blood pressure while on cycle? 115 over 75. What was there? I'm reading. What's the problem? This means I'm looking. That's your thought process? I do that. I I pretend I have long fingernails. I thought thought you're like stirring someone, like a manual disinfection. What starter dose do you recommend to make? For make on MK677. 25. If you can handle the hunger on 25, go to 15. Do you do 12 and a half a.m., 12 and a half p.m.? Fuck or no. How do you do it? Before bed. You do it before bed? So you wake up hungry as fuck. Then you've got enough GH kicking when you can go do fasted cardio. If you can make it through that, you go have some food. 
Hopefully the ravenousness will go away. But most people don't plan their life like that meticulously. I mean, it's, um, is there a specific or optimal blood pressure for an enhanced athlete? Yeah, 115 over 75. And NPP versus DECA? It depends on how long you want. If you're new to the drug, then use the NPP so you can pull out if it's getting a little too rough. But if you, you know, <laughs> all the girls got that joke. But like, if if you run it the DACA, and like if you know you like it, then you can just go with the DACA because you're gonna be on it for a while. And heard you should only run Halo ten days out from a show. Is that correct? And I believe this is the guy that had asked about his national. Yeah, staff. I mean, for real, Halo is popular amongst bodybuilders pre-contest. I'm not convinced it's that great. But I know some people like it. The guy who makes my stuff for me, he says that it's because no one's ever ran real Halo. And he's gonna, he says he wants me to try some real Halo that he makes it for me for my next show to see so I can do the Pepsi challenge. And I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. How often do you, do you think specifically? Now, obviously, your, your access point to some of this is going to be a lot different than, say, the average gym goer. Mm-hmm. How often do you think people think they are taking Halo and they're taking Winstrol? I don't know. All I know is I've ran steroids around the clock, morning, noon, and night for the last 15 years. I've never gotten anything bad. I'm on 10 milligrams of DHEA right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know how people manage, like, what do you do to these people that they fuck you over by giving the wrong drugs? <laughs> it's like, everybody's nice to me. It's, I mean, we have fake AIs floating around really? on, on a local level. It's, it's crazy. Like, um, accessibility is a, is a huge, huge factor. So. I guess people are afraid to give me the wrong shit because they know, they assume I'm going to be able to know. Like, I just go, <laughs> like, I'm like some Colombian cartel. <laughs> it's like, this is only 98% pure. Yeah, he must cut his face um, off. Do you run Tren all the time? No, I don't. I haven't stopped. I haven't used Tren in years. I used to run it all the time. It was stupid because it made it harder to grow. Tren's terrible for growing. If Tren, yeah, I don't. That's a that's a big trend that I. It's a TikTok. I should call it Tren Talk instead of TikTok because that's it's because of my videos. yeah Tren Talk. It's because only TikTok people think that Tren's good. And that's what, it's like this stupid Generation Z craze that it's the, the dumbest drug we use in the off-season. It's only for cutting. If trying to bulk, should you eat before working out? Now, keep in mind, of course. we have a lot of people that are not enhanced at all, so ask Of course, you need to eat so. before you work out. You should eat all the time. How else you can get food in your body? Fasted workouts are not you ideal. Know, waking up and doing lifting, although people do that of all ages, is fucking retarded. Oh, this is a good question. You, why do they make fake gear if they want repeat customers? They don't make fake gear. It's a myth perpetuated by the compound pharmacies to get you to buy their dumb HRT bullshit. Hmm. And the compound pharmacies are the ones that make the fake gear. That's the funny thing. I want, I want to point out here, when when we talk about fake gear or, or the potential, I would say if somebody's getting something that's that's underdosed or counterfeit, half the time they don't know. I once had a client who was running an insane amount of compounds, a crazy amount of tests, and uh, I pulled labs. I was like, we're going to pull labs mid-cycle. Like, I want to see what this looks like. You came to me on this. I want to see what's happening. And uh, he was so natural. He was so natural, and he was like, but my, my strength went up. Like, it's from my boy. My strength went up. I'm so strong. I'm like, yeah, man, it's a powerful placebo effect. Your strength went up because you thought you were enhanced, and you had great gym performance. So, like, keep it up. Man. Keep injecting nothing. It's great. How, You're doing fantastic. How long ago was it? This was maybe about a year ago. Really? So there's still fake gear on the market? In you, have to, you have to remember, though, like, I think a lot of it depends on if it's where – if it's coming from like a local level or not, or if they're, if they're purchasing maybe something through through one of the major websites, like there's different avenues. And I think you're, you're at higher risk for receiving something counterfeit when you're going through your boy's boy, boy, who probably just puts plain oil in his grandma's basement or something. It's weird because it's, it costs a dollar 80 cents to make a bottle. Yeah. It's not expensive. I don't know why anyone would rip someone off. 
Um, I mean, you're getting fifty to a hundred dollars for a bottle. It costs you a dollar eighty to make it. It costs you eighty cents to make it without the testosterone. It's a dollar's worth of testosterone. Who wouldn't actually put that in? That seems so strange to me. Thoughts on eating before bed? Yeah, go ahead. You eat when you need to eat. You what? get ever get your food in that you're required to eat. This is, I mean, I understand what they're they're, they're they're basically working off of this bizarre bullshit that they tell the public that's based on nothing. There is, are still women's fitness magazines that are circulating that say like Well women probably should just not eat to eat after seven PM. Right. Which but that's because they're so bad at macros and math and calories that just elimination bullshit like don't eat carbs or don't eat fat, or only eat in a four hour window. Like that's the amount of sophistication you're dealing with. That basically they're treating them like there's something in between a chip and an amp in the hand. That they're not able to grasp something as simple as you eat 12,000 calories, 1,200 calories a day, no more, no less. That most women won't do that. So then they're saying, okay, stop eating at seven. And then they'll do that and it works. So they're like, fuck, that this is a sophistication level. They can't handle anything like addition. So we have to give them Math something. Math is problematic for everyone. That's always a hard one. It's like, like math is the most basic, fundamental block of reality. So I see, I'm definitely going to require math to do this semester, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> All right, I had 2950 test level on 275 tests and 50. Winnie, is that good numbers? 2957 test? Uh, 2950 test level on 275 tests and 50 win strong. Well, considering normal is what, 250 to 500? Yeah, it's great. It's fucking amazing. Starting dose for MK2866 and MK677 stack, doing 3 milligrams and 25 milligrams currently. I don't know, SARMs are stupid. Same, I, is that? We, so I think, I, I talk about I like about I like MK677 right, a lot, a but people think it's a SARM. It's not a SARM. It's not. And that's because it's marketed as SARMs. <laughs> And it's so stupid. Does hematocrit hemoglobin get increased while on test, even if injected daily? Yes and no. If you're dehydrated, it's going to be higher. So make sure you drink more water. The reason why bad doctors think that your hematocrit and hemoglobin go up is because you store more water in the muscles, which means you have less in the vascular system, which means you're going to have a higher concentration of red blood cells relative to plasma. But if you drink like a gallon of water before you get your blood work done, hematocrit and hemoglobin will be fine. No one needs phlebotomy. Hydration, and and I always tell people in reference to therapeutic phlebotomy, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound, right? Like it's just, there's other ways that you can typically manage it. And if for some reason it's, you know, and, and honestly, if you go in, if because of the increased DPO production, if you go in appropriately hydrated, worst case scenario, we're gonna see maybe a slight elevation in RBC alone, independently, with no other elevations. I've never seen anybody have high hematocrit and hemoglobin if they're hydrated. And I, I understand also, I, you know, I, I look at myself, you know. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> okay. T 10 years ago, too, though, if someone says fasted, I think 10 years ago fasted, I wouldn't have eaten. I wouldn't have drank. I've been like my dog going in for surgery, just cut everything off at 8 p.m., and then those lab results are going to be incredibly skewed. So I think some of it can be lack of communication from... It's because the nurses story. don't know the difference between NPO and fast. NPO means nothing by mouth. Fast means no food. But the thing is, is the nurse's argument is, well, some people have coffee and they don't know not to put cream and sugar in their coffee. I'm like, then they deserve to die because they're an idiot. How do they not know that there's calories and cream and sugar? Fuck them. Bloods check, free testosterone, only 230 nanograms per deciliter of 26, 511, 230 pounds. What's a good route without committing to TRT just yet? Wait, what? Basically, super low testosterone, um, um, 511, 230 pounds. They are young, only 26 years old. Mm -hmm. Don't want to commit to TRT. What's a good route? I mean, if it's that low... Even if you do diet and exercise, it's not going to come up, it's to, gonna come up to where you need it to be good. But this guy kind of wants to have kids. So I would say that the best move would do HCG, 
I would go 250 or 500 micrograms a day. I'm a proponent of HCG, and I know that if you were to take this to any type of modern day TRT clinic, no, they're going to throw in clomiphene at you. Right, don't, don't. It's, they're going to charge you 800 bucks a month for um, HCG. I think I get mine for like 75. Yes, you can get affordable HCG through Todd, who is a physician, by the way. I don't fucking uh, mark up people like those other places do. 11 fold, 10 fold. All right, speaking of phlebotomy, uh, benefits of donating blood for gear users. There isn't one. It's should, fucking, the idea is to create a cycle design and make the lifestyle choices and use the supplementation to where it's not required. But it's not even that. It's just that you're not drinking enough water before the blood work. It's, it's, it's stupid. This, that we don't leech people anymore. It's 2023. Does Clomid prevent your nuts from shrieking? No, but ACG is supposed to. But she doesn't care how big your nuts are anyway. <laughs> and the smaller your nuts are, the bigger your dick looks and dick That's what I always say. I know. Well, dick well, remember, like, specifically, like you said, that these are new people. It's not the same 60 people yeah. it was an hour ago. Yeah. So I'm just going to repeat it. It's almost like I'm just developing mantras. Like two hours of this will have a religion. <laughs> All right, my, oh, oh. my hemoglobin runs around 20, okay. and that's even before TRT, and I drink two gallons a day. I guess I need more. It has salt with your water. Cause you're yeah, only, I didn't you're, realize how many people are avoiding salt yeah, still. We, that's another thing. Yeah, because they think it's 1960, and the doctors have said Every single stupid shit that's ever been said, it seems that these people are remembering. But then the important stuff they're forgetting. So the reason why drinking two gallons a day isn't helping is because you're not holding the water in your body. You're just peeing it right back out. I love the, the verbiage of this. How did, how did Todd say how to burn gyno off again? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> just turn your chest down, turn your primo and mastron up. And then if it doesn't work, you can use raloxifen. And the thing, the thing with the, the raloxifen too is I think a lot of people... You have a, like a loading, if you're trying to address yeah. gyno, you have a loading phase to, and then you drop that, right? The, tamoxifen is a loading phase because it's the metabolites of tamoxifen that actually do the, the gyno destruction. Reloxifen is instantaneous. So reloxifen, do you, do you keep that? Because what was it? I've, I've never used 20 it 20 to 60 I've is never, the normal? I haven't used it yet. I would just check out what Tanner's I think he says. I think he goes with reloxifen yeah, too I know. normally. I don't know what the dosage but, protocol but, is off the top of the Tanner's like the son I've always wanted. <laughs> He's so adorable. We need to uh, make his TikTok stay on this time. His videos get flagged all the time. Um, is there anything that can get my nuts back to regular size, or am I stuck with peanuts? HCG will make you much bigger. I once had a girlfriend, and she was like, I love HCG. I was like, why? She's like, your nuts are so big, and your loads are huge. So if your girlfriend likes having huge loads, then use HCG. HCG. I was only using like 500 a day too. It was like a scary movie. What's Todd at again? It's Todd Lee and D, my name. I think I, I hopefully put it in the description if it's, I didn't It's okay, that. it's just easy though. It's my name. Oh, Gina answered it. Thank you, Gina. Did she answer it with Todd's name? No, um, Todd Lee and D. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. which is my name. Don't worry, I'm working on the blue check thing. They're trying to say that my name isn't. MD. And I don't really, I don't really get the blue check thing. Well, although the, I, th I always thought that Google's, was stupid until someone, I got a fake account. If right. someone looks up your name and there's more than one of you, yours stupid. goes to the top of the list. See, I know that wouldn't be a problem for someone like me, but now there's Jamie. a fake, there's a fake me, there's a fake Coach DJ Vanilla Face Zero that's selling gear to people but not giving them products. I know, I know. So, that happened Santa too, so. <sighs> What is HCG? What it, I mean, it's basically, it's a version of LH made from a placenta. So it's a girl's it's version of dog. LH. No. Oh, luteinizing hormone, which is normally made by our pituitary, which triggered signals the balls to make testosterone. I didn't know there'd be people watching this that don't know what HCG is. So I can't conceptualize the level of education. So this is, I, I have, so TikTok, especially because of the demographics that I, I cater to and some of the tags I use, I end up with people that are completely natural and have basic nutrition questions. I have people that, you know, are very advanced competitors. I have a bunch of pros that come on and ask very complex cycle design questions. So and ask everybody. About, 
And so, so you, you I'm never getting know. this, and you're getting this. And it kind okay. of just, right. like my YouTube content, the questions like on my Paul's YouTube. Paul's getting this, and Kurt's getting this, and you and me get this on my channel. So like my TikTok, the TikTok is here, crowd is here. Instagrams, okay. and then my, my YouTube. Like this, it's very the it's, long form. It seems like the YouTube is way more educated. I think that the attention span might have something. Well, to you can't do with learn the content that I produce. You too. can't learn if you have no attention span. I do quick things on here, right. all all categories. So I can't control that one. Something angry. She's gonna be mad until she finds me. Okay, most efficient way to dose Anavar due to half life. There is no official way to dose Anavar to do his half life. There's only one right way to use antibar, and that's sublingually pre-training. It's not an anabolic, really. It's just a pre-market. Is creatine a scam? No. Oh, she just wanted water. She didn't want to see anything. Creatine is probably one of the only things that isn't a scam. I love creatine, and I think people really don't capitalize on it. No, they'd rather just try and not like it. Um, aside from BPC and TB, is antibar the best PED for post-surgery healing, in your opinion? I got that because it said IO, and I kept reading IO trying to figure out what it was. Um, in your opinion, uh, Anavar is mentioned in that context because that's what's FDA approved for. But the FDA approval was pulled. Honestly, all anabolic steroids would help post surgery. Just the Anavar is only approved. Also, it kicks in fast, and it can get in and out fast. And because Anavar is suppressive, but it's not very suppressive, so you could take it six milligrams for a couple of weeks, which is the normal post surgical amount. And then you pull it, and it's out of your system, and your balls come back to normal in no time. Christian Moreno, who hates, your guts, right? hates me, but is still on here, wants to know, for the 10th time, why are you giving someone a meal of only yogurt? I don't know what that means, but yogurt's okay. not a meal. So hold on. Do you, did you write diets for people? Yes. I do. Have you ever read, written a diet for someone that had yogurt? It has contained yogurt, yes. And is it their last meal of the day? Sometimes I will pair it on with that. Yeah. Right. Okay. So the, the answer to your question is not in phase. Is that it's the casein is a slow digesting protein, and most women won't eat anything good for them. So you have to trick them into eating something that's good for them by giving them something that's tasty that they think is junk food. We do this in the like Oreos. Yeah. It's like rather than Oreos have some yogurt with some granola in it. It's almost like I do that for myself when I want to just absolutely crush my kids' Oreos. Weird. Weird how I would come up with that. So the, with that the answer to your question is the yogurt before bed is crash in your plane into a lake rather than an orphanage. I've always wondered if that's like a code question that maybe I don't understand, kind of like the bowl questions, because he gets on here and asks me that. like. Well, he's just mad at you about something. Maybe know. maybe his girlfriend hired you, is. and then she dumped him, and he blames you. It's, it was a yogurt, not, not the fact that he didn't have door knockers. You have no door knockers, and no, the it's, yogurt. It's, it's, it's only the small balls. That's the only reason <laughs> she dumped you. Is that she's obsessed with big balls? She's got a big ball fetish. She wants to gargle them, and you took got rid of your big balls, and. DJ was the one who brought, opened your eyes to the idea that your balls are small just because you had to use drugs. It's all your fault your balls are small, small balls, Christian. And that's why. And now, I want to just say that I'm kidding. Christian, I don't know you. We'd probably be great buddies if we went in person. No, Please we don't. wouldn't. I, will, I would stop it. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I guarantee you. If I grabbed him and carried him over to you and set him down and told him to apologize, he'd pee himself and say, I'm sorry, DJ, and then he'd hang out with us. We'd probably give him new pants so we didn't have to smell his piss. I would make him hang out with me. He'd be like, you have, you have to rub her feet while she wears your leopard. And so, too. Your smelly leopard side. <laughs> <laughs> rub, rub Queen DJ's smelly feet. Christian. <laughs> and what's the greatest, I know he's listening to this because he's been here he's the whole time. <laughs> They're talking about me. Yeah, it's like I'm getting attention. Oh, this is my chicken. Oh, this is chicken's late. My chicken's late, but it's but better, late, better late than never. I'm working with a dog over here tonight. And what's nice, you guys can all hear my dog barking. This won't pick up. <laughs> Just don't overthink it. Give yourself oh, a little Oh no, I just did. Yeah. Oh no. It's okay. Still, Christopher Nolan would be disappointed in you. I knew that, I knew that, I thought that. I said, we just look like it's much. It is completely fucking useful as well. 
Oh, I didn't notice it. I hate technology. Work with the doctor who recommends five weekly test shots. Would every other day be okay instead? You should do it every day. Tell him to go fuck himself. He's a dumb piece of shit. <laughs> what are your thoughts on AC262536? I loved it. Which Star Wars movie was that? I think that was eight. I thought you said something about a droid. Isn't that like an assassin droid? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's something about an assassin That's why I looked at you like... Yeah, it's, it's an assassin droid. Kind of like IG-88 and IG-11. I was like, that peptide? I'm not... What is that? Well, it's just it's an assassin droid. A lot, that's a very long number. It's, it's an assassin droid. <laughs> um, 100 milligrams of test weekly for six weeks on TRT. Total test, 1042. And free test, 148. SHBG 70 before TRT. So what this do you is think? A, I think you should get a console. All right. That's a long. Yeah, that's, that, that's not an appropriate question. That's a console. All right. I guarantee you that's not your SHBG now. Yeah. What, what's the next question? Um, is a test run, in quotes, uh, is a test run low dose of TRT to elevate levels safe? What are you talking about? <sighs> okay, you're introducing an exogenous hormone that's known to be suppressive. And if you try and take the safe route or perceived safe route by giving yourself very low doses, you will end up probably crashing your own test levels and not even giving yourself replacement levels. So when talking about exogenous hormones, less is, well, I did, we do say less is more, but not to the point where it's not even gonna get you back to where the you were previously. minimum I go is 20 milligrams a day. 20 milligrams a day is your Fisher Price level Huggies pull ups level testosterone levels. Todd, tell us one more time what your TikTok handle is. Handles the word. <laughs> what handle is? It's Todd Lee MD, my name. Ideal primo dose. Um, it, it depends on the goal. If it's to actually get your estradiol to 40, then you match the primo with the test. And thoughts on four Andros. What the fuck is that? Kids, I don't know about this Drake song or what <laughs> Hannah Montana is doing or your little sarms that those are not real. They're like bullshit. I anytime that's it's a more unique or exotic compound, I always send them to Tanner because <laughs> the what it meant, meant. Oh my gosh, so many. That's just questions. a bunch of bullshit. All you guys are falling for this marketing bullshit. These idiots are trying to sell you shit that isn't real because it's legal and that they haven't been banned yet. And they're t telling you a bunch of lies, like it works and it's safe. And it's like, fuck that bullshit. Nothing's safer than the old normal stuff like testosterone, Primo, Mastron, Anavar, GH. Don't fuck with nothing else. There's a reason why every one of the Olympic stages is using the same shit. It's the real stuff. And if you don't want to use steroids, don't use steroids. You know, take up bicycle riding. The thing is, a lot of the, I mean, out, outside of the, the ridiculous natural supplements that promise boosting capabilities, when you start experimenting with some of these other compounds, not only do they have the same exact risks and potential side effects, but work. way more, and they're not as effective. Okay, why would insect steroids work better than human steroids? It's just dumb. Um... What topic did Kurt and I do this morning? Kurt and I did, what did we do this morning? Life, not an exciting one, but a needed one. Lifestyle choices and over-the-counter supplementation to optimize health markers while on site. Oh, I should watch that. That's something that should be interesting. That, that we went on so many rants. It was, it was, it went, it went sideways a lot. Well, I went on rants. He doesn't rant. He gets pretty, he's pretty calm on camera. He is. A straight shooter on camera, and then I get like overexcited and overzealous, and then we go, Pew, and then he kind of he brings it back in. Mm. Anavar, well, is it good? For what? That is not I'm gonna sing a song. I'm, I'm gonna butcher this word, and so I'm just not gonna say it, I'm gonna let you say it. You've got a root powder for, for kidneys, and I just uh, don't wanna say that out loud. Oh, look at, oh, there's a delay. Thoughts on Clem versus T3? Or Astralglus root powder Is that how you say versus it? extract for kidneys? I don't fucking know. Astralglus. I'll just have good cholesterol and have good blood pressure. You don't have to worry about that shit. Just eat right, exercise. And thoughts on Clem versus T3? It, it's not, that's, that's so, like, would you like boobs or pussy? Like, it, you like them both. It, it depends on what they're using it for. They're, they're completely unrelated drugs. 
one liberates fat from the fat cells, the other one makes the mitochondria work faster. It's hard to compare compounds that, that have, have nothing to do with each other. Yeah, I, I think the, the and it's not going to be either or, you use both of them most of the time. Almost always yes. it's going to be both both combined. Um, it's hard to, hard to compare specific compounds, and it, it's case by case context too. Like I will say, in terms of thyroid manipulation, like I'd be much more likely to use that on someone that was maybe clinically obese or a higher body fat percentage versus clin. Like I'm not using, I wouldn't use clenbuterol. And I think, didn't, I think, who was it? There was an endocrinologist that did a piece on current. They were, they were analyzing data where they'd seen that basically clenbuterol doesn't have any down regulation and that's not a risk unless it's in clinically obese. And in the trials, it, it not only, they experienced down regulation, um, but it completely solved that loss entirely in clinically obese individuals. Um, for my third cycle, what do you think about test trend last 12 weeks out and put Anavar the last eight weeks That's for fine. a cut? But I would ramp up the trend and start at five milligrams a day and increase it by five every week. Oh, this, uh, this is the girl she would love a deep dive in estrogen management for females. Okay, so figure out what your estrogen levels are and then bring them up to the appropriate range with either injectable Valerie or with patches. And if you want help with that, I'll help you. And you can book a consultation call and he can prescribe for you because he is a physician. What is the best beginner cycle for men's physique? Except he spelled physic wrong. <laughs> well, I think that we're uh, putting the cart before the horse. If you can't spell the name of this Oh, he spelled it right. Just kidding. Okay, okay. <laughs> he corrected it. Okay. All right. So that's... All right, so there is no cycle for anything. There's either a masking cycle or there's a cut cycle. Doc, can you prescribe HGH? Legally, yes, but you wouldn't be able to afford prescription grade HGH. It is quite expensive. Yeah, it's a 20 a grand a month. Yeah, and uh, actually, I can get around the limitations. I don't have to. It, it, for me, I don't. I can prescribe people even if they're not um, AIDS patients. Is a total testosterone of 1042 and three tests of 148 a good level for TRT? Wait, hold on. Total test of what? 1042? And then a free of what? 148. Yeah, free doesn't mean shit. Good Ten, levels a, a for thousand, TRT. A thousand for test is great. I would say most, if I, if I have someone that's on testosterone, and again, even if they are truly hypogonadal and they are just wanting to feel human again, I think a thousand nanograms per deciliter is where most most men feel their best. Well, I like to see it at least a thousand. I like to see at least fifteen hundred, and if your dick works, it's good enough. <laughs> Go so, I'm so crude, but it's so simple. Everyone overthinks this shit because they're busy listening to doctors that don't know a goddamn thing. And that's the hard part is so many people are looking to their primary care and they don't for prescription know protocols. Hell. The only people who know anything are bodybuilders. Even the HRT doctors don't know shit. Okay. I think we're we're caught up on questions. You want to wrap up? Why? I'm having such a good time telling people 115 over 75. Sarms are stupid. D-ball's worthless. We should have cleared that all up. Ask the question correctly if you want an answer. Best type of test? The one that you will respond to? I mean, I prescribe mostly SIP because it's easy math. If I wanted to use 20 a day and it's 200 milligrams per milliliter, then it's 10 on an insulin syringe. So it's easy math. Most guys can't do math. Girls definitely can't do math. Some to, girls can, but models don't care. To clear, this is the, the female from, from before. China? Um, <laughs> so, <I'm joking. laughs> I'm not making fun of you, I'm making fun with you. Um, I love that movie. To clarify, would love a deep dive on estrogen management for females on TRT, how to keep estrogen low or in range without the use of an AI. You shouldn't need that. Are you like... Then I was, it sounds like you're using way too fucking... If you are dealing with aromatization yeah. as a female... Well, you're just... Okay, so the correct thing to do is you treat the hormone that's deficient and raise it. So if you were deficient in testosterone, the appropriate thing for a female is a half a milligram, that's 0 0.5 milligrams of testosterone every day, and your estrogen should be fine. If you're getting a period, you're good. 
And Jay, there there's some things that we can't discuss on a, a live stream, but you are welcome to book a consultation with, well, with Dr. What was he Jay. asking? Something really complicated um, about himself? Source, source, sourcing questions for uh, growth hormone and pricing. I would say, well, yeah, I can't talk about that, but you can get a consult, and I officially will not answer the question. <laughs> so if you're from the FBI or the DEA and you're watching this, I don't help anyone do anything. This is for entertainment purposes only. All entertainment I don't mean only. shit. This is all a form of comedy. And Hector, you were asking about a volume, like a liquid volume. Um, we would need to know no milligrams. If you are injecting anything into your body, you need to be able to differentiate and understand very basic dosages, especially if you have already started injecting. Yeah. Um, Drugs are measured in milligrams, not in milliliters. Be an adult and learn how to do math and know the mass of the drug. Never, ever, 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 ever tell someone the volume. Most oil, now this is where volume does matter, uh, most oil you can inject at once. What? I'm assuming... So you get maximum absorption from a one milliliter bolus per location, but so if you're going to do more than one milliliter, in theory you should pull the needle out and stick it in somewhere else. Although that's probably pretty painful and causes a lot of scar tissue. Also, there's a phosphorus stretching effect from putting the oil into the muscle. But most of the muscles that would respond from a huge bolus like that would be so deformed by the huge bolus, it would change the shape of the contraction of the muscle. So, and to make your biceps bigger, you wouldn't put a large injection into the biceps because you could tear the bicep trying to contract around a giant fluid abscess. So... I just, I guess the simple answer would be one milliliter and anywhere it's going to absorb faster than three milliliters, but the three milliliters in one shot would be pretty much limited to the glutes. I don't think you can do lats. Some people might do lats. I definitely wouldn't do shoulders, arms with three milliliters. Okay. And... Anything I can take with my, with my TRT to help with energy, supplement-wise specifically. I'm assuming you're, you're not asking about... I don't understand. Like stacking. Like what type of... I So supplements for, for energy, I like L-theanine. I actually like a one-to-one caffeine Get L-theanine some complex. Sleep. Get some sleep and quit caffeine. Magnesium at and, night and is like, helpful. But if you quit caffeine, you'll sleep good. And your sleep will be restful and you won't need anything for energy because you're not coming on your I have found a lot of people that struggle with sleep too. It's not even just a matter of, of caffeine. It's I don't think a lot of people pay attention to their total caffeine intake with their their pre-workouts. And I give people caffeine curfews. I'm saying no. I'm saying people should cut all caffeine. All caffeine. Zero milligrams a day. If you want to be happy and live a happy life. Zero milligrams of caffeine. Best thing I ever did was buy I buy decaf espressos. That still got caffeine in it. The best I found was that I because I drank them all morning because they taste so good. It's not even yeah, a caffeine. So, They're just delicious. Yeah, I don't care what shit tastes like. I just want to win. It's just like I don't drink alcohol. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't bang hookers. I don't snort cocaine. I don't shoot heroin. I don't beat children. I don't. You just eat them. I just if they don't run very quick. But I just don't do anything wrong. If you want to be the best and you want to win, don't do anything wrong. I think it's also a huge misconception that bodybuilders are completely reliant on stimulants to function. That's what, I think that's like a sounds, crappy gym rat This thing. is bizarre. The problem is most of the people who you think are bodybuilders are not bodybuilders. They're just douchebags who identify as a bodybuilder. Yeah, people that just show up with a tripod at your gym and wear slides, that doesn't make them a bodybuilder. That doesn't mean that they've ever stepped on stage, let alone done well, or on a, on a very competitive stage at that. So I'm just going to throw that, throw that out there for the world. Um, CJC1295. It wasn't a question. It was a statement. But any thoughts? Just just the word. Yeah. You know, it's just... So it's supposed to stimulate the growth hormone re, um, instead of the ghrelin receptor on the pituitary, it stimulates the um, normal growth hormone secretion. So it works in a different pathway than uh, MK677. So it has a place, 
without the DAC if you couple it with MK677. Other than that, it's useless. And what to do if glycogen levels are too high? What the fuck? There's no such thing. I don't know. Surely. That's I think you're, you're getting words confused here. Glycogen. Glucose, maybe? Yeah. Glucose? It has to be glucose. Whoa. Whoa. Well, I'm understanding you so much better now. You were all like, where do you get these questions from? I didn't know there were people like this. Yes. Yeah, glycogen and glucose are not the same thing. They're like, sorry, doctors, scientists, we don't know fancy shit. I'm like, I literally learned that in ninth grade. We literally learned that in ninth grade. And see, sometimes they're, they're not questions, they're just statements. And they're not complete statements. Male, 46, taking two cc's of test. Oh, wait, now I'm reading this correctly now. Okay, two cc's of test, which again, we don't know what cc is containing. Um, estrogen went to 43, caused mental side effects. No, it's not the estrogen. At 43, that it's, should... If you can't measure drugs correctly, that's the problem. Went to start back with, this is a different person, went to start back with one third of a cc three times per week. Thoughts? I think we should not answer any question where someone Say CC. says cc's. They don't deserve help, but they can't tell us milligrams. Site injection rotation recommendations. Delt middle, delt rear, lateral head of the tricep, lat. That's it. Just don't do the glutes if you compete. You can do the glutes if you don't compete. But you can't do it with an insulin syringe, and so obviously you shouldn't do it, anything without an insulin syringe. And then the quads, if you do the quads, it's going to fuck up the quads, but in life, you need to hurt. And that's another thing, coming from clinics, almost all prescribers will tell you to do quad injections, I found out. Which is terrible because your quads will get tight and then it'll throw off the contraction of the quad and your knee will hurt. But they don't know that because these stupid fucks don't lift, so they have no business doing a goddamn thing. What are Todd's thoughts on <sighs> L-carnitine post-loading stage? Insulin necessary? Optimal? I don't think insulin's necessary. That The idea is if it's already loaded, you don't need insulin to load it because it's already loaded. So yeah, you could get around the loading stage by using a normal dose, a maintenance dose with insulin, but you could also get around that by just having carbs because your pancreas makes insulin. Opinion on Cialis, Cialis for training? I prefer Viagra because Cialis gives me a lower back pump and it also takes about 24 hours to kick in and it also causes sinus problems. I will be, and the sinus issues kill me. Would you, the best so example, I'm gonna try the Viagra tomorrow. The, the best example is this, is like, you take Cialis, your dick's hard, right? So you can fuck this girl. But then your lower back's gonna be pumped and you're not gonna do a good job because you're in too much pain. And you're gonna be gurgling snot bubbles in her ear. So I think she'd rather you had an 80% hard dick and didn't have to listen to you choking on your own mucus than have a hundred percent hard dick. <laughs> like that's you know, having five inches as opposed to six inches is not the end of the world if it means she doesn't have to breathe your snot bubbles. Snot bubbles. So furthermore, or you can just take Viagra and you don't have to worry about any of the snot bubbles or the lower back pump. But you won't get a hard to let us know that he loves this, but the mic is trash and we need to do better. What? It's almost like the mic isn't connected to anything. What? It's trash. <laughs> the mic's not working right now because the, t the computer went down. What's his name, Mike? I don't remember. No, we're talking about mics. I know. But D, D. Ellis. D. Ellis? We will do better just for you. We'll do next better. Time. I feel like I'm, I'm getting scolded by Joey Swall. For my do for my better. cell phone stream on do TikTok. Do better. But like, I'm <laughs> so butthurt that my free information he isn't. Said, it's the echo. I, I would have a rug in here if my dogs didn't <sighs> pee on it. So I gotta embrace the echo. <sighs> the echo. So for real, dude, if you watch the beginning of this, we had these mics set up, right? It was so cool. Yeah. For, for a 20 while. minutes. And then the it's neither of us are young enough to A, use SARMs, or B, you know how any of this fucking technology <laughs> works. We had her, her eight-year-old came in here, and she hooked us all up, and then she went to bed. She's busy playing Minecraft. She hasn't had time to help. She loves her some Minecraft. Man. I was like, show me your castle. She's like, no. Ashley asked, what are your thoughts on on Tessamoral and Ivamoral blend while off Anavar? Like, specifically while off Anavar. Who gives a shit? 
It's just like, that stuff's a bunch of rip-off that they I should... like my pet type. That's also because it's the only thing I can take. Yeah, really. but I, I think it's funny that all these people are blowing all this money on these peptides because they think that they're good. And specifically, I will say, from experience, the effects that people talk about with the Tessamorlin specifically, you you aren't going to see those effects unless you are already a lean composition with slightly visible abs. Like you, Isn't you need to be... What is, isn't that supposed to be like, um... It's for visceral fat, for HIV patients with visceral fat. What? Yeah, that's, that's what, that's what was initially studied Why don't you just it. lose fat, then you won't have visceral fat? That's, that's the, the biggest perk with Tessamorlin. So that means people take it and they think, they, it's they being marketed they, as stubborn belly fat. That's fuck how fuck. it's marketed. Nothing, nothing fucking burns belly fat except for a low carb diet, low calorie diet. Just lose fucking But weight. that's how it's marketed. I don't care. And so then people weight. get on it, and then they're like, well, I look the same, and yeah, I got, like, some water. Because you're not it. eating in a deficit. It's so much simpler. For hundreds of years, people knew bread made you fat. It's nothing new. And it's very... It's also... If you compare, like, the CJC Ibo blends compared to the, the Tessa Moreland, Tessa Moreland's going to be triple the price. It's not like that. You're literally comparing... Four or five hundred dollars worth of these stupid ass peptides to a hundred dollars worth of growth hormone, and that hundred dollars worth of growth hormone will last months and be a hundred times more effective. Why would anyone use anything other than growth hormone? I think sourcing for a lot of people. You're, we're also in communities where these are not these are a non issue for us to get them too. There's this thing called pricing, so you could type in growth hormone. And then it's going to be websites yeah. where you buy growth hormone from. So mind-blowing to me. <laughs> and no one's even tried it. What gauge pen do you prefer? Uh, 31 gauge and slow syringe. Anyone who uses hypodermic needle and is using less than a whole CC is moron. Opinions on DHB. Stupid. DHB is rapidly growing in popular. It's I get because, asked a lot. It's just about because that. it's being more. I understand. It's just it's stupid. It doesn't do anything. We haven't got a single uh, D ball question. We could. People know better than to ask me about my, my opinion. Fuck D ball. Fuck DHB. Fuck Anadrol. Fuck SARMs. Fuck HRT clinics. Fuck peptides. And all you need is to eat right. Eat right. Eat right, sleep, lift weights, test, primo, master on GH. Maybe a little insulin if you're trying to gain weight and you can't process food fast enough. <sighs> People are like, you know, he's ornery. I don't like him. He is ornery. That's a good way to describe him. Ornery. Like, yeah. It's just like, for fuck's sake, where do they get these ideas? It's like they were born in a GNC in the bathroom. And then, like, their whole life is existing in this GNC. And every single gullible marketing thing that's ever been said has fallen on them. At no point did they ever decide to watch what a single pro bodybuilder is doing. Like, these are the most muscular people on the planet. Obviously, they don't know what it works. I guess the food's the biggest one. It's always... Yeah. I guess because I'm the one trying to make people eat the right foods. I had no idea either. So he's an angry one. <laughs> I'm not that angry. I'm bitter. There's a difference. Angry would be if I was raised my voice. Tips on dealing with insulin sensitivity from gear. There is no such thing as insulin sensitivity from gear. Get less fat. That's your problem. Just go for walks. After every meal, you will not have insulin sensitivity. I will say this is this is an unpopular one, but like any anytime someone comes to me and they want to push, they they want to push drugs. They want to talk about compounds and. Most people are not at a body composition where it's going to be I say those people all the time. beneficial. Like you've just, and I'm like, let's let's see some abs and then we'll talk. Like, let's That's talk exactly what I say. And then they don't like. I them. had someone quit actually because he brewed, and I was like, hey, you don't need any gear yet. You you have to lose. He's like, I wanted to bulk. I'm like, but you're already fat. Like you don't need to bulk on top of being fat. You need to have abs. Then that's when you would use drugs to get bigger. And then he was like, well, why don't we use drugs to lose weight? We don't need drugs to lose weight. You're losing weight right now without drugs. That's a big thing that I, I talk about too. And like, again, we, we, you know, I've gone back and forth a lot about, about uh, GLP-1 agonists too. But if you like, if you're just not a healthy body composition, 
and you can stick to a diet. Like you don't need to be playing with drugs. Like the you drugs need to don't get, make you just lose fat fast. Get a deficit. That way you can keep it off instead of artificially, you know, instead of introducing compounds. Like you can do that if you're if you're really lean and you're trying to get stage lean. That's a different story. But if you are unhealthy and you are not at an ideal body composition, you do not need drugs to assist with the fat loss process. Not at all. Once you're, you know, below, once you're already lean, once you have abs, if you have veins on your abs and you want to get even leaner, now we have to force nature's hand. But Mother Nature's quite compliant if you basically are giving her what she wants. Baking soda pre-workout and why do supplement companies have caffeine hyped up in their pre-workouts? Because people, they know that the people who buy pre-workouts like that don't know what they're doing. And they're addicted to working out because they're addicted to the pre-workout supplements. Caffeine doesn't help with the workout. It's just that that's what the market demands. So they provide you with what the market wants because they want to make money off of you because they know you don't. I have not used pre-workout since I bought matching colorful gym sets. <laughs> Which is funny too. Is I feel like most girls go to the gym to show off their gym shirt and get boys to talk to them, not because they actually want to exercise. Because it sure doesn't look like they're trying. When they left, they don't even break a sweat. I look glamorous when I left. He's in for a treat. Oh really? You're gonna have Lovely. like just have like one of your fake lashes on your cheek. <laughs> it's bad. It's like people think like I beat you. I'm just gross and I look unpleasant. <laughs> people are really glad your husband's there because you'll think you're kidnapped. I just everyone says it looks like I'm about to cry the whole time, and I think it's. Just... I hope you're miserable when you work out. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't think I look like I'm gonna cry, but yeah. I hope people... you're miserable when you work out. Is that means you're trying? I'm disgusting. I yes. say that for sure. Yes. What just happened? I don't know. No, they don't know what happened. My phone's gonna die too. We're just dying everywhere. Oh. We're gonna go till my phone dies. Yeah. What's good? <sighs> oh, I feel so. Why are we talking to these? They're dead. Run <laughs> out Boom. What's going to take for joint pain? Will BPC-157 pills work? No. You have to inject it for joints. You swallow for ulcers. Inject for joints. There's a J in inject, and there's a J in joint. Always go with injectable yeah, BPC. And, and I always inject intramuscular because I'm not a pussy. And don't be skipping out on like omegas and like really really basic things yeah. too obviously omegas i need to feel like shit if i don't take omegas omegas are more important than steroids omegas are the most important the omegas are magic <laughs> yeah. can anabar cause constipation no i you're haven't heard too, that one you're eating too many vegetables not drinking enough water sumo or conventional i don't know are you trying to look like a pussy <laughs> These people don't know my sense of humor. So they're mad at He's funny. He's funny. <laughs> He's don't funny. Valid, don't validate my <laughs> bullshit. I just mean that they don't know I'm kidding. He's actually really mean. He hurts my feelings all the time. Yeah. Um, does nutrient partitioning socks. affect blood sugar? In a good way. Localized injection too. I don't remember what that was, but when someone said, wait, the mics weren't working and you were talking the whole time. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We initially had all and, of this and, set up to work for a while. And then we thought we'd just we'd keep it looking professional. So we pretend that the mics were on and we pretend that, the, but once the headphones stopped working, then we couldn't hear each other switching them on. We were just really excited to use the new, yeah, the new want, office because we got, we got it painted and he just came to Texas. So that was, yeah, that was, was a quick thing. Dink. I think I'm caught up. Ask more questions now that we can like hear well and, and rapid fire. We need more we need more questions. I'm so thirsty. You had water in here. I know didn't I you? ate I drank it a while ago. I don't think you realize that I'm going from freezing weather to seventy degrees. We brought an entire case of water for you. Well, just, just for, for me. you specifically. Diva Todd. Yeah. Our I'm, water does not taste good here, so Oh Zarka. This looks like Oh, it's probably Texan, but it looks like a uh, Russian star in a Russian word. You're in Texas. Can I come to you for HRT? Actually, you can go through Todd. Todd practices telemedicine. So. Yeah, but I'm not in, I don't think I'm sure of Texas yet. Can you not? Not the appropriate channels. I have bad channels. Book a consult. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm creative. 
How many athletes do you both coach at a time? As many as are smart as I am. I don't have a cap. I think I'm at 70 people right now. I never, I never set a specific cap for myself because oh. each load of clients is going to have drastically oh. different needs. Yeah. I do have a wait list a lot of times, but it's just because I want to make sure that I can... I've got one guy who's just is climbing Everest. That's his sport. I knocked him. Um, I basically got his red cell count up so he could carry more oxygen in his blood and then brought his body weight down and turned his strength up. So he got through, he climbed a practice mountain in the Andes. In That's Peru, crazy. And he climbed it in four days rather than six days. A lot of this is PED talk specifically for, I guess, hypertrophy, but PEDs. For blood count. It's so uh, much. I, I it's, was, it's cool. I, I literally used all the drugs I hate on this guy because it was... Yeah, things that you never would have. I was like, like how do I induce erythrocytosis? Yeah. Like, this, this I can do. This I, is, I it's, it's my favorite. Blood up, no problem. Any, anytime I get, get like specific types of endurance athletes or anything, it's always mm. my favorite. Um, is HCG necessary? <clears throat> I only used it for like three weeks in the past 15 years because I went off of stuff because my friends talked me into trying being natural. And I took HCG and my peer girlfriend. Pressure. They peer pressured you into being well, natural? Well, they peer pressured me into using my product, Thor's Hammer. They said, it works for us, dude. It'll work for you, too. Why wouldn't you even try it? It's your product. I'm like, okay, fine. I was like, my girlfriend has no ovaries, so I don't really see a point in trying to knock her up. It seems pointless. Why don't you put gas in a broken car? And then they're just like, just do it. So I fucking took it, and I took ACG with it. to her as a broken car. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, she loved it. She was like, oh, my God, your balls are so big, and your load's huge. She was like having so much fun. And then I started losing strength. So I was like, fuck this, I'm going deco only. And I was on deco only for three years. What do you think about the Olympi Olympia placings? I think Derek should have won. Um, I think Samson's glutes were way softer than... I think that's not appropriate for you to be that soft at the Olympia. I know that Milos doesn't believe in shredded glutes. And that's why his athletes never have shredded glutes. I think Hadi looked really good for the front, but his boots were not as lean as they should have been. For the front, I think it was very close, Hadi. and then the back was... It was Derek lights out. No, no, no questions asked. I think Roman should have gotten higher than 14th. Roman should have been like third or fourth. Because I'm a conditioning guy. Conditioning and aesthetics over mass. Is P5P really effective enough? Prolactin... I mean, is P5P effective enough to manage prolactin in comparison to CABR, I think is the way the question is. I'm not really favorite. familiar with P5P. I use P5P, but no, if you if it's, if it's you are actually experiencing prolactin issues and it's compound-induced, typically that's going to require pharmaceutical interference. P5P, if you just kind of have higher levels, not out of range, but just on the higher side, I, I, I will use P5P, but if you're seeing elevations due to compound use... But, I mean, like, let's be real, like, if your prolactin is high, there's a reason it's high. It's either because you're using TREN or because your estrogen is too high. So fix the Usually problem. Usually TREN. Yeah, I mean, why would you just have arbitrarily high prolactin? Yeah, it's almost always And it generally, if they sleep enough and they're eating right, it goes away anyway. And the thing with prolactin, too, and I, I see this a lot, is... I don't think I think people forget about physical stimulation too. And you're mm. running compounds, you're working, and they you fuck with with your their titties. nipples so much, and, then, and it, they just check them, and it starts out as checking, and then they're like, "Oh, is it sensitive?" And then they start, and then I watch these young guys walk around the gym just doing this, like they don't even realize they're doing it, and I'm like, "Man, like everyone else is watching you just like massage the fuck out of your nipple." Like the thing is, guys, that you're not realizing. Remember, prolactin is released when breastfeeding occurs. So therefore, if, if you play with a nipple, it's going to cause prolactin to go up. So once these guys are concerned about gyno and they're subconscious about their chest, they start playing with their nipples, which then makes them more red and inflamed and swollen and makes the milk glands produce more milk. So that makes them bigger. So you play with it more and it produces more milk. And that's why you're getting the prolactin increase. If you just stop touching your tits, you'd be fine. Are your clients mainly lifestyle, competitors, pros, and what divisions? Mostly lifestyle. I have a lot of really sick people. And none of them have ever touched SARMs. 
I mean, I, I get people smart enough not to touch timers. I'd say I have mostly lifestyle. I have some competitors. I have both amateurs and pros, but I also work with a lot of like strength athletes and just do their nutrition. I do not have a single. Oh, I do. I, I have two wellness girls, but I think you and I are both pretty diverse in terms of males and females. Yeah, unless someone does two shows, I don't consider them to be a competitor. If they just do one show, or and they don't like it, and, and they want me to fix them after someone else fucked them up, I still consider them lifestyle. 200 milligrams weekly cause estrogen to get high in a 40-year-old male. Thoughts on 100 milligrams split into one-thirds weekly? I don't understand. You should be using it every day. 30 milligrams every day, you'll have no problem. Injection schedule makes a huge difference. I don't necessarily know if you need a reduction in your actual testosterone. No, every time I've ever took someone from some stupid-ass once-a-week schedule down to every day, they all have problems with it. What can you do if test messes with your prostate? It shouldn't have. That's only like old men. Are you sure you have an elevated PSA? Are you sure that you have elevated free PSA? Do they even order free PSA? And did you check it prior to starting as well so you right. actually have a comparison? Or is it just you're not peeing enough? You know, like that, that's tracking down by benign prostatic hypertrophy versus prostate cancer is two completely different things. And I don't trust that some general PCP knows what he's doing. What's your cost when it comes to the combination of PEDs and nutrition? Not looking to compete, but just for guidance. So PEDs and nutrition. I do. I have one package. It's a year. It's um, Dr. Karina Dodson and I do the training programming, the nutrition, and all medicine, whether it's cholesterol, blood pressure, hormone replacement therapy, all that stuff. Um, that's thirty-seven fifty a year, but there's a payment plan options. You can get financing for it through a firm as the underwriter, and so it comes up being a lot less. But it ends up being like I think three hundred and fifty bucks a month or something like that. I don't know my prices, but they're on my website. Really? All of the, all of our coaches have different different price structures, and we have different packages. It's public. We don't ever fully transparent. I just don't. Yeah, I have to know be the same price for everyone, and it's like the same amount of work for me and Kareem and to work someone up for just nutrition or just medicine. Then, so that's why it's everything's included. It's actually less work if we don't have to leave a huge gaping hole. Like as we've indicated, that you could be like, "Oh, my blood pressure is fucked." It's like, well, it's probably because everything in your life is wrong. So unless we can see everything you're doing and fix it. And 99% of the time, you don't need any blood pressure medication. You don't need any cholesterol medication. I fix everything or she fixes everything through just diet and training. Thoughts on supplementing underground lab tests when you can't afford TRT? Go for it. It's just as good, if not better. In fact, all the compound pharmacies use the same raws from China that the underground labs do. Preferred method of cardio? Um, <laughs> sucks, but... That's a little bit more difficult to achieve. So, like, you have to have a willing victim or a lot of Jesus. Don't refer to them as victims. <laughs> no, I mean, that is a joke. I'm not inducing, I'm not a part of rape culture, and it's inappropriate for me to joke about it. There's a lot of pain and suffering in the world, and I'm making light of their pain and suffering. But, in all reality, I like this Cybex arc, and you can drive through the heels and put the setting low and work glutes. You can turn it up halfway and work quads, you can turn it up all the way, work glutes and quads, and then you can rotate. So once one muscle starts getting burning, you can switch to another muscle. And because it, you control the tempo, you can do hit on it or less. Side ice arc is the shit. And it's at every plan of fitness, so I don't want to hear excuses. I was, I was gonna go with roller skating, but... Roller skating? <laughs> what the okay. fuck? When, when how many of these people are fat? Do you really want to see someone fall and break a hip because they're roller skating? I thought it was a question like, like what is our fault? Oh, I, I thought, don't know. I don't thought, you interpret it. I thought it was, like I thought skating. it was interesting. What do you think the best form of cardio is for me? I, I have usually people just see like stick stairs. But yeah, I, I wasn't skating. suggesting I use GHB in order to get <laughs> sex. No, I was saying like, I mean, like what should, form of cardio should I do? I was like, well, it depends if you have a willing victim or not, or if you have to turn to GHB, which would be bad. Because that's why I said willing victim. All right, 38-year-old male, 308, with a test of 450. 
Should I get on TRT? No, you should wait, lose weight. Wait, train, get you on, should then get lose on TRT. weight. You're 308 pounds. No, do not worry about drugs. Lose weight. Your testosterone will go up naturally. And 450, that's not, I mean, that's... That's not even low. That's You're high. just really, really overweight, and you need to lose that fat. Did he say how tall he was? Mm-mm. Yeah, so unless you're seven feet tall, 308 is really overweight. Sorry, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. It's just I'm but not it, again, it's one of those things where a lot of people will implement TR. Like that was what we talked about this morning was implementing compounds before you get other things, and it, it'll help you out in the long run. You'll get more out of it too. Yeah, it's so. just stupid to waste your time with drugs when you're that overweight. Just lose weight. Best meds or compounds to increase FSH and LH levels to get pregnant. Pregnant. To impregnate a woman or to get pregnant? I as think a it's woman? by a male asking. I, What's his name? Is it Corey? It, it had to be. It had to be an ambiguous name. Yeah. It had to be. It's like Pat from uh, Saturday Night Live. So, I'm gonna assume from the male. So FSH and um, HCG. That's like the. That's gonna drive up stand. your. That's gonna make your balls work again. And you, you and, can get um, it much a more affordable route by going through. Pod. Yeah. So Chase has a good video about it. Steve has a good video about it, and I get much more affordable pricing than other HRT labs. Total test is oh, one sixty eight. Holy shit! Yeah, my socks look good. Yeah, my your socks are better than my quads. <laughs> <laughs> All right, total test is one sixty eight. Should I resort to underground test if I cannot yeah. afford TRT? TRT should be no, relatively inexpensive. TRT is fucking expensive as fuck. It's like one thirty a bottle. Like, I've never seen them pay it. Well, yeah. I've seen people transcend oh, yeah. yeah, but like we call it, my underground labs is like 40 bucks a bottle. The biggest thing is, it, regardless of where, where you're, you're sourcing, you do need to make sure you're doing follow-up lab work. Mm -hmm. Come to me, I will help you. I'll make it work within your budget. Because I know what it's like to be poor. And I know you think I'm being facetious. I'm not. We actually did that. We covered that in the Todd Lee story. Josiah interviewed me for my YouTube channel. And then, surprisingly, Dave Tate was wise enough to interview me on his channel. And that'll drop January 23rd. And so when's that come out? Yeah, it's but the big time. The big time. Ways to help lower LDL and increase HDL while mid-cycle on Trend or NPP. No. It's pretty much the same. A fiber, hit cardio, berberine. Um, tell the amount of people that are not taking berberine and omegas in general. Make sure you're right. not. Make no sure you're not the, I'm that. on Red Forty and Trend. What's fish oil? Yeah, that's that should be called the TikTok manifesto. It's like the, I don't understand what people are fucking thinking. Mm. Uh, thoughts on transitioning from enanthate to acetate mid cycle or enanthate to probe? I guess just changing. It's stupid. Um, Always doing the long acting esters. Short acting esters are dumb. There's a lag and I can just see my hands waving. I guess Trend, I'm trend's the exception. Trend acetate is better than trend acetate, according to most people.